Hi, it's Liz Nedden here. Let's have a look at some other factors when we're talking about inference. So, we first want to think about what other factors might affect our numerical variable. It's like a puzzle. We are investigating one piece. So we might be investigating what happens with the heights of young children versus adults. I'm only looking at one piece about the heights. But in actual fact, there's a lot more pieces that build up the picture of the child, the adult, the heights, and so much more. So what I need to think about for other factors is I need to think about what are some of those other factors to paint this big picture. And then I'm going to use some research to explain how that's going to affect. So here's our problem. I wonder if the median weight of teenagers is heavier than the median weight of young children for all children in New Zealand. So I'm comparing teenagers with ch young children and I'm looking at their weight. So in terms of other factors, I start with kind of like a little brainstorm and think, well, what else affects weight other than whether they're teenagers or young? So that's kind of like an age factor. So what else could affect it? Well, I know genetics. If you, I know some of my friends are particularly tall or particularly short, and that often comes in families. So there may be some genetic component to the weight issue. Maybe there's some issues with exercise. The more people exercise, maybe they have um, better weights. Calorie intake. If I'm eating too much, too little, is that going to make my weight heavier or lighter? And any underlying health issues, if I've got issues with, say, diabetes, type 1, is when they need to do extra insulin, and those people tend to be very, very um, small in terms of their weights, um, and so on. So let's now try and write up an example of this. So there's a number of different factors that could affect the weight of children in New Zealand. And now I'm going to go into a more specific example. If a child has parents that are both slim and short in stature, then because of that genetic link, it's likely that the the child is also going to be slim and short. Equally, a child whose parents have bigger and heavier bones and a wide, tall build are also likely to be taller and heavier themselves. So I went and then found some research, and in my report I've added this as a footnote and a reference, and there's a study in the, published in the UK that talks about how there is a link between people's weight and their genetics, where being slim is a heritable trait. So that is a full explanation. I've identified a factor, I've talked about how it can be affecting, so how does the genetics affect the weight, and I've got some research to back that up. Let's have a look at a second one. So another factor that could affect the weight of the children is the amount of exercise they do each week. So for example, a child who is more active and spends more time every week exercising, I would expect, and this is a generalisation, I would expect that they've got less body fat than a child who is less active and doesn't spend as much time exercising. And if a child has more body fat, that's going to lead to a higher weight. So then I went and found some research to support this, and so I went to the website Kids Health, and they suggest that kids can reach a healthy weight by eating right and being active. Thanks for watching.